been meaning to do this for a minute. It's a 94 Ranger. Started with a 2.3. Took it out and I put in a 98 Explorer 5.0. And here's just a video of how everything sits and fits. I've got the 98 up Explorer AC. Ended up even using their EVAP and have it plumbed into the 94. Just had to drill a new hole. Didn't want to deal with any different fittings or sizes. You do have to notch your frame rail. Let's see if I can get back in there. Right where your pipe dips down, you're going to have to take a little bit out. It's a tight fit. Expect to do some sound deadener and heat insulation over there. This 98 Explorer alternator was able to plumb it right back into the electrical. I noticed that I didn't go inject it on this one. And there we have her. I stuck on a 600 Edelbrock. Ended up using an N-Tank low PSI fuel pump like they used in the vans and trucks in the 80s. It's just a lift pump. Gives me about 8 PSI. You see my regulator and return line. You also see that I'm using the factory lines. I just changed the fittings out on this. They route back to the filter, back to the tank. Easy peasy, nice and cheap. Threw in a Petronics for the ignition, my distributor, and the coil. That is the 98 Explorer power steering. I was able to use the, the factory 94 Ranger hose. Just had to bend it up a little bit so it fit in there. Over here, see uh, the other side of the exhaust. See how goofy it is just because of the steering. And to back around, I've got the AC hooked up on this side, obviously, too. And how well can we even see it? Probably not at all. But down here, possibly it's showing up on camera, but I had to use the relocator for the oil filter. Um, otherwise, it won't fit, it hits the steering box, which as you can see, because you can't see anything, it's a tight as hell fit. Anyhow, that is actually rerouted back over here. And then my oil filter fits there. Stick it as far forward as you can on the frame, otherwise, as you see, you're going to have rubbing. That rubbing you can see on there is from my test fit where I had a little closer to the coil. Let's see, what else we got here? Took apart the factory wiring and routed out everything I didn't need for the EFI. You see the PCM sitting there? Nothing's hooked up. It's all been deleted, even the crossover lines where they share power. I uh, ended up sucking in the radiator. This is an earlier, it's a 94, 95 style radiator for the 4.0. Ended up cutting the bottom out of the radiator core here so I could suck it up, get more space. As you can see, I've got the mechanical fan going, and there is enough room in front of the fan for me to get my fingers. So I'd probably say about three quarters of an inch. I wanted the mechanical fan. I don't want the headaches of the electrical. I want something when the car is running, it works. All right, see the AC dip down. What else we got here? Oh, I guess the exhaust. The exhaust, I just did two straight pipes all the way back to uh, two, what are they, Raptor turbo mufflers? And I just have it dumping out the side here. The interior, I ended up using a 97 M5 ODR2 and took the F150 stock shifter and I cut it down. The reason I used the F150 stock shifter is because it has this knuckle on it. This knuckle repositions it and actually gives you enough room to be able to be in third gear and not buried in the dash. Right in there, I've got it in uh, either first or third. I'm not real sure. I just jammed it up in there, but no clearance issues. All I had to do was slice it right here, chop about three inches out, put it back together. If you think that's a bad idea, you should take a look at the Ranger from the factory. It's exactly what the factory did. They sliced them and welded them back up. It's just a lot nicer when a machine does it for you. And then, obviously, before we did the uh, important stuff like the engine swap, I stripped out the entire interior, put in sound deadener. We dyed the carpet. 
We also stripped down the door panels. The bottom half has been dyed. The upper half hasn't. And the unique thing is we cleaned the upholstery so well that uh, Nick had no idea there were blue stripes in the upholstery. And she's known this truck since brand new, since it was her grandma's. Ah, speaking of which, bed liner in here. It's been in there its whole life. Underneath, this bed is so clean. I mean, it is, it's is—it's a shame. There's not a dent or a scratch in it. It is just beautiful. Come around yonder here. Still have the factory sticker from, good Lord, I can't even read it now. Maybe it'll show up better on camera. Come around to something you never see on windshields. She still has the factory sticker on the windshield. Now the windshield's trash, don't get me wrong. We're gonna be replacing that. But it's still there. And we're sitting at 172,000 miles. I've probably got about 100 miles on this swap. And we're just working out the kinks and the bugs. Ah, here's the other thing we did right before. This is a headliner. These things all sag and are all god awful and get in your eyes when you're driving. Uh, this consists of less than a hundred bucks, the glue being one of the most expensive parts, then uh, the headliner material. We just got some at Joanne, something she liked. And uh, it actually turned out really sharp. This has been through an Arizona summer and it's not sagging. So we are impressed with a little bit of uh, expense for how it turned out. All right, well, that's what a V8 swap ranger ends up looking like right now. I'll do another video with it running so I can uh, throw this up on the tripod. But uh, expect to drop about five grand into this. And then whatever you recoup selling parts and whatnot. Take it, man.